Well, welcome North End family, and today I'm glad to have another one of our frontline workers. Karen Took is with us today, and Karen, so good to see you. Where on earth are you right now? <laughs> I am in Ibumatung First Nation. It is in Ontario, about 1,200 kilometers north of Niagara, in a fly-in remote community. So you can only fly in. I can't drive. Is that correct? Right. There is a sometimes there's a winter road uh, for a few months of the year, but for the rest of the year, it's only by air or by boat. OK, I was just hoping I could do a motorcycle trip, but we're going to rule that out. Karen, why are you in Fort Hope? Uh, so I'm in Fort Hope. Um, I felt called uh, once the when the pandemic uh, started getting pretty hot. Um, I felt called back to doing some frontline work and uh, it's a really long story of how I got here but definitely was called to do this work and here I am. I work for Health Canada and I am a registered nurse as a public health nurse and um, uh, so yeah I, this is I came out of retirement or semi-retirement to do this this work and that's how I got here. Well we're excited we're proud of you and uh yeah we just give applause what is so different about doing public health where you are today as opposed to in niagara for instance um so a lot of the protocols are are the same on paper but things like for instance when we have to go out and do covid swaps uh, a home visit for somebody who can't make it into the nursing station um, for instance, just last week in minus 37 degree weather, have to drive to their house, put on a gown and all the, the PPE and then walk uh, over. There had been a snowstorm, so we had to walk over the, the wood pile and snow pile. Uh, we kind of used the wood as stairs, climbed over that, get to their front door, do their nasal swab. Go, you know, disrobe, clean our hands, all this out at minus 37 get in the truck, come back and do the, run the test. <laughs> so those are things that don't really happen in, uh, in Niagara. <laughs> okay, yeah, point made. Uh, I'm not gonna argue with that, you on that. Um, what is the climate where you are, apart from being freezing cold, I mean, emotionally, are people struggling with fear, anxiety over the pandemic? Do they feel like they've been relegated to literally the backwoods, they're forgotten by Canadians? Talk to us about that. Yeah, I think there's been, uh, because this community is isolated, you can uh, isolate it or remote. Um, you can imagine if, um, if a virus got into the community and spread, it could be quite devastating. So the community leaders here have been really um, strict on um, travel in and out of the community and so it you know like everyone else with um having our restrictions from covid uh, does play on people um and it, it's hard on people and having to be isolated um there's a lot more long-term isolation for people here as well because a lot of medical uh, needs that they have to do are, are outside of the community so then when they come back they have to isolate um so yeah, definitely weighs on people um, emotionally. Um, there are fears of, of the pandemic, and then there's also, you know, just fears about what's what's happening. What when are things going to open up and be free again? You know, and um, tell me how many very common. how many people live there, and are they all going to get vaccinated? Uh, what are some of the challenges that you're having with that? Um, so there's approximately um, 1,600 people that live here. Um, the eligible number of people is about 650. So eligible for the vaccine means over 18. Um, I won't. Get, I could do a whole half hour on all of the details on that, but essentially over 18 is about 600 people. We are aiming um, the best for vac uh, vaccination for community is to get a herd immunity of about 80. So 80% of the community needs to be vaccinated to protect the whole community. And at this point right now, um, we the Orange team comes, uh, the plan was for Orange to come on uh, Monday. 
that they had uh, the ability to be able to come. So we got notice they're coming tomorrow. But uh, so we're putting together the numbers and uh, we're on the radio a couple times or three times a week or more. We're, there's a Facebook page. We're letting people know all that information. Um, and then there's a lot of coordinating. And I'm just a one small piece of this. There's a huge community team that are just working together and tirelessly to, to get all this together. So. Um, well, it's an amazing story. I mean, obviously I know more details and there's a lot more to the story. Zero in, um, we're so glad that, that you've taken this step of faith and we just bless you. We wish you were here, but hey, we can't meet in person anyway. So it seems like you're just still down the road. Um, talk to me, Karen, about how your faith is sustaining you and in the midst of being away from family and, uh, and also as you're interacting with people. Just talk to us about that for a minute or so. Yeah, um, so for sure, as I'm uh, definitely, I mean, every morning, Alan and I uh, meet for devotions. Thank God for Zoom because we meet for our devotions every morning and prayer time and that that sustains me like that just sets the the stage for the day make sure you know i'm always in conversation with god all day uh at times and and just really asking uh for you know peace and calm at certain times and i make that point of taking out that quiet time even though it's so hectic and busy even if it's a couple minutes just to have god like look for the direction and and then uh, it is tough um, being away from my family with Ali and and, uh, and my dad and that, but I try to stay in touch with them. And um, but definitely a few, um, the joy of the Lord is my strength, that uh, verse often. And then the other one is I pray is I love or love your enemies and pray for those who persecute you. That one often, as soon as um, I, you know, if there's anything that seems to be any type of conflict, I I'm reminded of that. And so then I just pray for the people and God is faithful and uh, has, yeah, been really present, which is great. Well, Karen, I wanna thank you for being a part of the call today. You and I have talked and I'm trusting that in some way that North End Church is gonna be a part of what uh, the ongoing story is in Fort Hope. And certainly it is right now as you're there as our representative as well. So uh, we just bless you and uh, we're proud of you. We're thankful for, you know, you're one of the behind the scenes, but you're right on the front lines. Thank you for stepping forward. And uh, we look forward to when you're coming back and uh, stay safe. Yeah. And uh, we continue to pray for you. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks so much. God bless.